Want to know how mountains are made? Well, grab a seat, because I'm about to take you on a whirlwind tour through the, the fascinating world of plate tectonics, earthquakes, and volcanoes, all wrapped up in the epic story of how mountains like Mount Everest came to be. And I promise, we'll keep it simple and engaging, just like you'd want from a quick video. So, let's dive right in. Imagine the Earth as a giant jigsaw puzzle, but instead of cardboard pieces, we have massive, rigid plates that make up the lithosphere, the outer shell of our planet. These plates float on a semi-fluid layer called the asthenosphere, which is a bit like a thick soup. Now, here's where it gets exciting. These plates are constantly on the move. They can drift apart, collide, or slide past each other, and it's this movement that leads to some of the most incredible geological phenomena we see today. First up, let's talk about convergent boundaries. This is where the magic happens when two tectonic plates collide head-on. Picture two cars crashing into each other. Instead of crumpling, the Earth's crust gets pushed upward, forming magnificent mountains. When the Indian plate collided with the Eurasian plate around 50 to 60 million years ago, it was like a colossal head-on collision that shaped the Himalayas, the highest mountain range in the world. The Indian plate, being denser and oceanic, started to subduct, but because both plates were made of continental crust, they just piled up instead of sinking completely. That's how the Himalayas began to rise, and they're still growing today. Now, let's not forget about divergent boundaries. Here, plates are moving apart, and molten rock from the mantle rises to create new crust. This can lead to underwater mountain chains and ridges, but it's not as dramatic as the towering peaks we see with convergent boundaries. Think of it as the Earth's way of building new land, like a baker adding more dough to a rising loaf. Then we have transform boundaries, where plates slide past each other. This is where you get those infamous earthquakes. Ever heard of the San Andreas Fault? Yep, that's a transform boundary in action. But while these areas can shake things up, they're not really responsible for creating mountains like the Himalayas. Now, let's zoom in on the Himalayas. Remember that initial plate movement? About 200 million years ago, the Indian subcontinent was part of a supercontinent called Gondwana. Over time, it broke away and started racing northward at a whopping 15 to 20 centimeters per year. That's faster than most of us walk. When it finally collided with the Eurasian plate, it was like a geological heavyweight bout. The Indian plate, being denser, began to dive beneath the Eurasian plate, but because of the thick continental crust, it couldn't fully subduct. Instead, they pushed against each other, causing the crust to thicken and rise, forming those iconic peaks we see today. And guess what? The Himalayas aren't just a one-time deal. They're still growing. The Indian plate is still moving northward at about 5 centimeters per year, which means that the Himalayas are in a constant state of upward motion. It's like watching a slow-motion race where the mountains are the ultimate winners, inching higher and higher with each passing year. This ongoing collision also causes frequent earthquakes in the region, reminding us that the Earth is very much alive and constantly changing. Now, let's not overlook the Tibetan Plateau, which was also formed during this colossal collision. Picture the Indian plate pushing into the Eurasian plate, causing the land to buckle and rise. The Tibetan Plateau is one of the highest and largest plateaus in the world, a stunning result of this geological drama. But here's where it gets even more interesting. While the Himalayas are rising, they're also being shaped by erosion. Rain, snow, and wind wear down the mountains, carving out valleys and shaping the landscape. And the Himalayas aren't just beautiful. They play a crucial role in our climate. They act like a giant barrier for monsoon systems, creating lush, fertile regions on one side and arid landscapes like the Tibetan Plateau on the other. It's a delicate balance that highlights the interconnectedness of our planet's systems. Geologists have a treasure trove of evidence to study this incredible process. They analyze rock formations, fossils, and seismic data to piece together the story of the Himalayas. Did you know that they've found fossils of marine organisms in the Himalayas? This proves that, at one point, 
this region was underwater before the epic collision that brought it to its towering heights. It's like finding clues in a mystery novel, revealing secrets about our planet's past. So, to sum it all up, the rise of the Himalayas is a direct result of the convergent boundary interaction between the Indian and Eurasian plates. It's a grand tale of collision, uplift, and ongoing growth, reminding us that our Earth is a dynamic and ever-changing place. The mountains we see today are not just static. They're part of a living story that continues to unfold. And the next time you look at a mountain range, remember the incredible forces that shaped it and the ongoing dance of tectonic plates that still influence our world today. Isn't geology just the coolest?